Bill Park and from the Park Christian Community Church. It's resurrection morning, sunrise at 6.30. It's the day that we celebrate our Lord's resurrection. And I'm just happy to be able to share along with Pastor James Jones in music this morning. So the first song I'm going to start off singing, it says, He is Lord.
Good morning. Good morning on this sunrise service of Easter morning. First and foremost, I welcome you here as we celebrate our risen Savior. And I want to give a special thanks to Pastor George and First Lady Debbie for leading us in worship. I ask that we pause for a moment to give thanks to our God who is risen indeed. Gracious Father, we thank you as we gather in this cemetery where the dead lie, but we know that our Savior has risen from the, from the grave. And because he lives, those of us who put our trust and hope in him will also live. And so we give you thanks as we worship you this morning. I've been thinking about what this Easter would look like this year. And here we are, our Easter sunrise service. For me, has been a tradition of going to Messiah Church at six o'clock in the morning and gathering with brothers and sisters for prayer for gathering with them in song and worship. And now, here we are. We couldn't even begin to imagine what this Easter service would look like. Couldn't even imagine that we would all not be worshiping together in church but from our homes, watching one another on our laptops and our televisions and our smartphones. And maybe some of you are distraught. Distraught because you hear the sound in the background of birds singing, but a train. And realize that we have not left to gather in our prospective place of worships. Maybe you're distraught over love traditions that you would do with family and you can't do. Maybe you're discouraged about everything that is going on in our world right now. And even determination to make the best of the situation despite necessary limitations that we are under right now. Yes, this Easter will be different for sure in many ways. But at the heart, it is still about celebrating the good news of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. And so let me lead us in a journey with the Marys, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. But before we go there, let me start on Good Friday when Jesus said, it is finished. And he laid his life down on our behalf. The word tells us that Joseph, a rich man went to Pilate 
and asked for Jesus' body. And Pilate granted it to him. And he had it taken down and he wrapped it in clean linen. And he laid it in a tomb cut out of the rock that had never been used. It was his own tomb for himself. But the very next day after the preparation, we're told that the Pharisees went to Pilate and asked if he could give some protection around the, the grave of Jesus so that his disciples would not take him because they said that he would rise in three days and he didn't want any more rumors to spread about Jesus. And so Pilate said, do what you need to do to protect it. So they took guards and he gave them a seal to put a seal upon that stone. And in essence, that seal was like this, like a lock. A lock to keep folks out, to keep folks from getting in and to breaking the seal of the tomb of that big stone that was in place. For it would be capital punishment to break that seal. And so we end there and we start with, oh, one more thing. Right when Joseph had prepared Jesus' body and had laid it in that tomb, the text says that both Marys were right across watching. I had never caught that part, and maybe you had neither. That both Marys were right there as Jesus was laid in the tomb. So early Easter morning, as we are here, and the sun is beginning to rise to the east, the women got up with spices and scents, fragrance, to go prepare Jesus' body. They knew that Joseph had did the best he could because they watched him. But they also knew that this was women's work. This is what the women did to prepare the bodies for burial. So they gathered their equipment, they gathered their spices, and, their, and they made their way to the tomb. This, the scripture tells us as they were on their way, they wondered who would roll away the stone. But when they got there, they noticed the stone was gone. The stone was not there. And they, they went inside and looked and there was a figure, a bright white figure of a man there who told them, why are you looking for Jesus? He has risen. He is not here. Go tell his disciples. And the women were terrified. They were afraid. But they left. And they went back to tell the good news that Jesus had risen. Now we know that the disciples did not believe them. And if we know the account of this culture, who would take the word of women about such a thing. But God used women to point to the, 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 the truth of this story. He used these women as he continues to use women's today for the advancement of his kingdom and to point us to a risen savior. I, I wonder do we doubt like the disciples doubt when we hear the good news about what Jesus has done and what Jesus is doing? And maybe in this season that we're in right now, this season of confusion, 
this season of wondering what does God have for us, the church? What does God want of us? And I only can believe that God wants us to continue to be like the risen Savior. To share the good news of the gospel to those who are hurting. To, to those who are lost. To be his hands and his feet. And so we gather this Easter sunrise service to remember and to celebrate our risen Savior. I, I want to point out a few things that I noticed in this cemetery that struck me in a very special way. We celebrate a risen King. There's a cross right over here. Come with me and see it. What do you notice on the cross? A crown. Our God. Our risen Savior is King of Kings, Lord of Lords. And he's coming back for us. We need not be afraid about what this world has in store. For we know what our future is in Christ Jesus. Oh, don't get me wrong. For sure, we have a little anxiousness. For sure, we have worry and concerns about our family. But take heart. Jesus told us there would be trouble in this world, but he had overcome it. And he showed us that he had overcome it by raising from the grave. He's alive. And Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians of this when he tells us, but thanks be to God. He gave us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my, bro my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Brothers and sisters, we have work to do. And so as we celebrate in our homes, social distancing, we celebrate with the hope that we have in our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He is risen. He has risen indeed. God bless you. Amen. Well, for another song this morning, I want you to join with me. The song very simply says, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show.
Why? Why? 